Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Steel Division 2. I'm going to be setting up some defenses here on the uh, right side where the computer has also set up a lot of uh, defenses as well and see if we can uh, hold against the enemy. Uh, the beta is currently offline, but I'm uh, using my press access in order to get behind some of the uh, blocks to uh, bring yet another uh, multiplayer battle. We had a lot of trouble on this map getting uh, some things to work. We were not able to defend as the Soviets. There was some sort of crashing when placing down defenses, but I'm going to try to do that here today and uh, go over a little bit of the basics of defense in the game and things that I've learned so far and run some experiments as well on what works and what doesn't work so far. In fact, the uh, right side, it seems, would be a perfect pl uh, place to defend. Uh, as there's a lot of bridges and, of course, tight quarters that can be captured or held against the enemy. But since the uh, AI is not really occupying spaces around here, I think I'll set up some defenses on this side. Actually, perfect for some of our experiments. So one thing that I always wanted to do and hadn't yet had a lot of time to try out, because when you're playing against players, time is very limited, is using zigzag trenches. We'll see if that uh, works out and does as well uh, in battle against the Germans who are about to come uh, steamrolling down this direction and it seems like both factions are very good at attacking and defending based off of what division you're playing as but uh, of course uh, each deck is a little different and of course artillery being very powerful in this game with the Soviets having a more uh, preferred artillery of the Katushas and and Andriushas and they're very very powerful so uh, zigzag trenches like this will of course uh, protect us from bombs and uh, machine gun runs so that way for example if a uh, you know, a plane tries to attack with a machine gun, it won't be uh, directly facing down the line. It'll have to come at an angle and it won't be able to kill all the troops. Now, this is definitely not uh, a very small defense. This is much more of a larger uh, defense, but we should be able to put a big line of barbed wire down like this. And uh, what I mean by that is we should be able to fit maybe two squads in each one. It's not one continuously dug trench that's in a zigzag, but a few that are at an angle to try to make a difference. What I also found out and what a lot of players were talking about is it seems it's best to put a lot of guns on flat terrain tucked into trees. In other words, if we put our uh, little uh, AT position back here and uh, use it to fire down at the open roadway here, it might really work to slow the enemy down rather than being on an elevated position. So for example, something up here, they seem to have a little trouble hitting some players are reporting. I haven't had much trouble with that, but we'll give that a little try here today as well as putting some of our AT guns back here too. Actually, that's the PTRD, which is a little bit of a smaller gun. Let's try this one. Here we go. Something a little uh, closer to the front lines. Now let's put down some additional bunkers and see what happens. Now players, uh, when you play against people, of course, are going to be able to see these and artillery these and really bombard these positions. But it's been a lot of fun defending in this game so far. And defense is a very uh, key mode in this game, and it's been a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, both defending and attacking too to see if your attack will succeed. So we're going to try a few different uh, tactics here today to see if they pay off and uh, work well. We've got a lot of barbed wire as you can see to use. Much more barbed wire than we do trenches now. So I'm going to try to put some more barbed wire around to uh, block enemy movements and uh, try to kind of conceal the fact that it's there a little bit. It seems to be very easy to d detect if you put it down in a long line. So if you put it down in smaller uh, waves like that, it might be a little harder to see. Here it looks pretty noticeable. But if you put it through a forest in a small section, it might just look like dirt. And a player might easily miss the fact that you put it there. Crossroads, very important to uh, cover as well. Multiple machine guns are also very important, as uh, the AI will more than likely target those right away. And I'll put another machine gun and... Uh, AT position over here as well. Steel Division, been a lot of fun so far. Really been enjoying the beta. A lot of people who are excited uh, are saying that it's living up to the hype and ex uh, extending, or rather surpassing their expectations. And it seems like Eugen System has done a really good job in making the changes from Steel Division 1 that players really wanted to see in a whole new game, and also kind of took some inspiration from other games, I think, to make theirs even better too, which is great. Definitely makes a better game for all of us to enjoy. We'll see exactly how it works. Uh, is a line of barbed wire better, or are these small angled uh, positions that funnel them into certain areas for ambush better? If the enemy can break through, perhaps maybe they'll push their vehicles and infantry through the uh, gaps in the defenses and then uh, be targets for AT and whatnot. We'll see. I'm going to put another AT rifle over here just to cover. I say AT rifle, but it's actually an AT gun. And I'm also going to uh, set up a very... Uh, strict defense around this uh, village here. We've been instructed then by Papa Stalin not to lose it at all. So we'll put a couple of trenches here. We don't have much in terms of uh, length of barbed wire or trenches remaining, so let's go ahead and just use the rest of what we got here. <clears throat> Seems like we get equipped with, I think, about 
2,000 uh, meters, I believe, of uh, barbed wire and 2,000 meters of trench. So there's a lot of places to hide troops. I've also given us an incredible budget. Uh, we've given uh, both sides have 1,500 points to start with. So we'll see how effective that will be in uh, getting them a, some sort of a boost at the start. I'll also make sure I uh, put barbed wire down on that little tree section there and some more barbed wire here. Okay, time to start buying infantry, which are going to be extremely important for the uh, trenches. It's the only thing really that can hold those trenches is infantry and machine guns too. So you can put infantry and machine guns in there. So we'll try to drop a, a soldier off at each section. Oh, not to mention you can also uh, spawn your troops without transport, but it's just easy, uh, or rather I'm just used to uh, giving them commands at the start to move there, but to each his own playstyle. Efficiency of course is uh, subject to change based off of updates to the beta and whatnot, or the final game itself. With this being a beta, everyone's very impressed and very happy. It's a good time for this game. Alright, let's get some infantry into the woods. I think we'll uh, put some troops in there. <clears throat> if we put them here, they should be able to battle close quarters. The sappers here are also equipped with TNT, so close quarter battle inside the forest. If a tank gets close, it could also get hot, uh, hit by those troops. Let's also get some uh, PTSD rifles up here. Yes, the PTRS-41, also known as the PTSD rifle, can really cause a lot of pain. This is a very strategic defense here. I'm uh, putting a lot of assets into uh, this one particular line, so will that be good? We will see. We also have an IS-1 that we can start off with as well, so we'll put that on the lines over here and get a couple of KV-1s to uh, hold the line with it. Good suppression, but the enemy might have Tigers, so we'll have to be cautious about that. Additional anti-aircraft guns, we'll put these at the village, so that way they're a little bit concealed. And if the enemy happens to bomb or attack close range, they'll have to fly over the village. A couple of machine guns there should do some work. And also some mortars. And we'll fire those from here on our line out front. So the AI is uh, very intelligent in this game, though it uh, is more aggressive than ever, I will say. And uh, they're definitely setting up a lot of good machine gun positions. It's cool that you can play against the AI with friends as well. If you're uh, just trying to get a game going and, you know, there's no one really to play against or if you're afraid of professionals of the game who can be very skilled, you can always just do a cop stomp and just have fun. That's what the game's all about. We'll get down a, a commander and we'll put him here at the village. And that'll boost the uh, defenses of our troops, too. So now you can see we've uh, created very interesting patterns along the uh, defensive lines. <clears throat> and artillery and uh, strafing runs might be a little bit more difficult for planes. We'll see if angling our... Uh, barbed wire and angling our troops inside of those uh, defensive positions has any sort of uh, merit to the defense. Wow, we've gone through a lot of those points. It's just an incredible amount of points already. I'm actually going to set a recon over here too inside the forest. I'll get some AT troopers up here as well with our lady snipers and I think we have a trench around here somewhere. No, it looks like we just had enough for... Wow, I guess we don't get enough stuff. We'll put whatever else we can out could save the remainder of our points now for a uh, recon unit. Uh, or rather, a, a plane of some sort. I think I get air in phase B. So anything else we get, we will save for, uh, let's see, maybe more infantry. Looks like we've sent out all the infantry we can. We'll just keep some sappers inside the town then to defend the uh, commander there. All right, well, I'm ready. Looks like the AI is ready. Let's go. Launch battle then, and we'll unload all of our troops. We're not really going to be moving too far. And enemy air contact already spotted over our position. Looks like a recon plane coming in right away, meaning that we made a good call on some of those anti-aircraft guns. We will need to make sure our troops get inside the trenches, so make sure we baby them inside. Make sure we tell them all to get inside. I can already hear 40 millimeter Bofors firing off, or 37 millimeter. And PTS rifles are going into the woods, as well as our snipers. Alright, AT teams and snipers are going to stand by. Looks like we've got a Horch 108 filled with infantry heading towards the uh, railroad crossing. And uh, friendly machine guns are already firing on them. Very nice. Hopefully our AT gun opens up on that. Looks like he's a little too far, unfortunately. And they're already shooting at our bunker, which is good news because that means they're stopped and they're shooting there and we can identify what they are. Oh, turret stuck already on one of our, uh, one of our tanks as we fight against a Tiger E. Oh boy. That means our uh, IS-1 is going to have to do some work on that. And it looks like we've already lost a KV-1 to the uh, Tiger firing. IS-1's really the only thing that's going to be able to take that Tiger out. So let's see if that shot works. And indeed it hit nearby. If we can suppress the Tiger, that's just as good as killing it. It'll be ineffective. Ooh, and another bounce off the front of the IS-1. 
That Tiger is definitely killing it. Commander is nearby. Everyone's been boosted to level 3, so we've got a selenium roadblock right here. The Germans are not going to be able to approach there. They're going to have to go through here. And it looks like our snipers, female snipers with the uh, Mosin Nagan, are firing at the artillery spotters that have fallen back. So with just one sniper team, we've been able to hold the enemy back. Lots of rounds coming in on those AT positions. And lots of defenses here in order to hold the road when the enemy does inevitably break through. We just don't have enough manpower to block them on the flanks. But we've certainly set up a roadblock here. So hopefully they uh, smash into this line. Though a smart player would be like, oh, no, I'm out. And then they'd go over this way and cut through over here. All right, looks like they are firing at us with everything they've got. We're going to have to get our snipers to safety. And let's get our artillery firing then. See if we can uh, target them and start firing at their position there. Something I should have done a while ago, actually, is started to fire at those positions. And our 10-man uh, squad here should give these guys uh, full veterancy as well, and a little protection, just in case infantry flanks through. Looks like our uh, KV-1s are getting a little closer with the enemy. And they're providing fire on those Sturm Pioneers, which are a uh, German group that have some bundled AT grenades, I believe. Transmission damaged on the Tiger. That's good news. Although we can't see it. No line of sight on him now. He's fall back on the other side of the village. Looks like he's getting ready to engage again with his damaged transmission. And more fire on our bunker. Another position lost to. I'm going to go ahead and have this squad pull back. See if they can flank over there. What? Out from enemy cover. And look at that. The mortar teams doing a fantastic job of getting those Germans to thinking twice on attacking the roadway. Let's fire on those AT guns now that are in the woods behind that. We've got more points to spend, but really not a lot to spend it on. We've got a few AT groups. I guess those will be something. Especially since we are dealing with a few tanks over there. Other than that, not too much to call out. Another KV-1 unfortunately hit by more than likely the Tiger. KV-1s are starting to get uh, thin in numbers. Let's go ahead and pull these back. They're a very well-armored tank, but not good enough against certain weapons like these. And it looks like the Tiger getting ready to fire again. And a hit and an explosion on the fuel tank of that KV-1. Only the IS-1 has the ability to take him out. The uh, KV-1s are really more of a tank to take on things such as the Stug and a few other tanks as well. Definitely not going to win in a war against the Stug by default, but has good enough armor to at least keep it busy while you manage to attack it with other things. Artillery is another good way to uh, lock your defenses down to make sure that any enemies that are approaching are going to have to cut through a... Uh, a large field of artillery and possibly take damage. Oh, very nice. Enemy uh, artillery spotter there. Destroyed. Which means that these troops now don't get uh, any sort of radio positions on the PTRD-41 position. And our troops are moving forward to block that crossroad. We're doing very well. Except for here. What happened? Oh, boys. What are we doing? Oh, no. 26 Germans snuck through and captured the crossroad. Our ally here. Let him drive right through our position. And I have nothing really to deal with that aside from, uh, like, an artillery spotter squad and some anti-aircraft trucks. So I guess we'll have to make do with what we got. I'll retreat from that 26-man squad. There's no way we're going to be able to deal with that. Well, let's go ahead and try to pin them down with artillery. I think we might be able to fire from there. Meanwhile, the enemy here has been pinned down. Forest is on fire. And the Tiger now having its transmission completely destroyed, or rather, completely damaged as it was before. But now we're dealing with a Panzer 4H. Let's see if the uh, IS-1 can get his shot and a kill. Oh, landing only nearby. This vehicle should be able to get him soon. All right, both of these squads are retreating from the 26-man squad. And our infantry are finally firing the mortars. Huge arcing shots that are going to land on top of those. Oh, perfect. 26-man squad already being pinned down and the uh, armored trucks here the or well the truck with the dishka machine gun on the back already opening fire and this is a 10-man uh, command squad so I'm gonna try to get them together give them good veterancy well there you go so if something happens like this and the enemy uh, enemy breaks through you're going to have to take action to help your allies out otherwise the enemy's just gonna funnel in there Looks like we're completely out of uh, HE shells now, so I can no longer suppress the enemy, but I can block their line of sight with things like the uh, smoke rounds. So we can go ahead and uh, pop some on this Tiger, so that way he can't see anymore. 
I won't be able to see him, but at least he'll stop firing at me. And we're going to back up with our... Uh, actually, our uh, tank there has been damaged, too. Loader's been knocked out. Good opportunity to fall back. All right, we're going to try to take this crossroad. Looks like, unfortunately, there's an MG42 there, too. So we'll have to watch out for that. But at least we've got good protection around the village where we're launching our commands from. And the Tiger tank having now to move in order to engage us, but no longer can fire on our vehicles with ease. We're going to need to get some uh, Studebaker trucks up. We can get these vehicles repaired, but we'll need a supply truck in order to do it. Spare parts and our artillery also needs ammo, but we can't do it yet. Meanwhile, it looks like the trucks are coming up on the enemy. Go ahead and stop those trucks and have the 10-man squad. There we go. Open up on them, boys. Oh, it looks like rounds coming up from behind. Oh, the Germans completely broke through. Boys. Unacceptable. The AI just letting through all of these vehicles. I mean, I, I built all my line here, but I, I could really only... Even if I was spreading myself a little thinner, I could only really defend about this space. The ally, uh, One of our allies having this area. Me having this area. Somebody should have went here. And the last player, probably over here, was something watching the flank. Looks like they're counterattacking instead. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to only hold the flags that we have possession of. Well, actually, we might be able to has, uh, harass these uh, these uh, Stugs now with our AT teams. Let's have our uh, commander go into the woods with them. This guy is mostly meant for artillery, but we might be able to push the line and get a position back. And it looks like... Oh boy, the enemy's actually pushed through here and attacked one of our AT squads. That was standing by to deal with them. All right, we're going to have to come back this way then. Let's get the sniper up here, though. Keep an eye on that Tiger. Tiger now chasing down our KV-1E and our IS-1 command unit. Tiger is a hell of a fighter, and he's not retreating yet. Usually a Tiger is a one-and-done situation where it gets hit and then it's out of the game, but this one taking a hell of a pummeling. And it looks like a Panzer IV-H was destroyed by our KV-1. And the Germans are retreating after hitting our line, our maximum machine guns there. And our 45 millimeter closer to the village, holding them back. Holding well, but not great. And it looks like we've re uh, recaptured this position. KV-1 destroyed. The machine guns are going to have to defend that crossroad now. The uh, ones on the back of the truck will hold there. Good damage being caused to the enemy. 58 seconds then. This line is definitely holding. The Germans are going to need a lot more than a Tiger to get through uh, 7,000 Soviets. Or however many happen to be there, there's quite a lot of men on that line. You can see each each uh, position almost has 100 men inside of it. So we're talking about a defense well over 500 defenders versus just a few German attackers. Interesting. Uh, so it looks like this position was captured and overran quite quickly. The end, it looks like our, our friendlies had a defensive position here, but they didn't put anything inside the damn trench. All right, let's go hide our vehicles now. Uh, T-3485, though, that's a good vehicle to see. Firing on enemy positions. Hopefully he provides uh, fire support on the Stugs first, and then we can take care of the infantry. But there's not much I can do against multiple Stugs that are kind of on top of me now. I could call up some more Fastniki, but I think we may have lost them at some point. And now finally in Phase B. That is fantastic. We now get a bunch of KV-85s, which should be able to pummel the enemy's position. And we're going to knock them completely out of here now. Let's have a huge tank push. We're going to push these enemies all the way back up and over the hill and try to take out these Stugs here. Meanwhile, this line is definitely going to need some love. So let's call up a Studebaker right away. And one to uh, stay in the back just in case. And then also we need some more something or other. Maybe uh, aircraft would do well. Tiger's tank still alive. Look at that. Tiger is sitting pretty next to the village. Though heavily damaged, is still in the fight because he's still on the line, and he can still fi uh, fire on our positions. We do need to get that uh, IS-1 some love, so let's go ahead and fall back with that. And it looks like, wow, the Stug almost on top of our, uh, our snipers. All right, here comes a wave of communism. No, uh, no type of defense is better than a good offense, so if we start getting aggressive and counterattacking, that'll be a good thing. So the KV-85, as many of you may know, is essentially just a KV-1 with an 85mm gun and turret. It's not exactly the uh, T-34-85, but it's along the same lines, and it's a good stopgap for um, the tank between the IS-1 
and the KV-1, which was, of course, the KV-85. A nice little middle ground. All right. Plenty of command vehicles coming over. And our commander is still holding firm at the village. Looks like coffee and everything is okay. They're just making another pot right now. Good. Just checking in on their supplies. It seems that they're getting low on doilies and cozies. So it's not a good thing. We'll see if we can get them some resupply soon. KV-85s are going to absolutely destroy that Stug. It is not going to have a chance. Look at all those rounds going out. And she's got internal spalling and she is bailing. Spalling, of course, is when a round hits the uh, side of a tank or anywhere on a tank. And uh, essentially there's shrapnel that can bounce around inside as it breaks off from the side of the tank. And uh, can really cause some damage, especially to the crew inside. Germans are pushing even harder now and taking some hits from our... Uh, what I'm hoping is the IS-1 possibly shooting back. IS-1 is uh, now out of AP shells. So though we put a heavy defense here, the enemy seems to be flanking here nicely, but it was put in the right position. Look at that. Now they're crossing with all these Panzer 4Hs, but now we have to clean up one of our allies' messes over here first, and then we can advance towards the other position where we really truly need friendly support at our own line. Nice rounds going out there. Beautiful. Okay, let's see some aircraft. One of the coolest things in the game is this Yak-9B, which times two can cause some severe damage with cluster munition. So let's go ahead and drop a couple of these. Let's drop one there. And let's drop one here. Let's see what happens. Looks like the Germans are trying to resupply a lot of their units. Any aircraft gun coming across the... Uh... Oh, oh. Oh, it looks like a friendly supply truck came over. I was distracted because I just want to make sure that our own Studebaker doesn't get destroyed. We need to continuously resupply oh, these here units. Here comes the bombers. Bombs away on one. I don't know if we'll make it out of there. Did not. But beautiful Katusha hits. Let's go ahead and get these Tiger E's over here to retreat. We need to alleviate the pressure on that line. Unfortunately, losing one of our planes, which is a big oof. But we are still holding. And that's more important sometimes than conserving a unit. If you can cause more damage to the enemy and sacrifice a unit doing it, sometimes that makes the difference. Incredible. Totally worth it. So the Yak-9B on the second attempt, much better. And our unit will likely get out as, uh, never mind, maybe not. I was going to say the enemy. Oh, there we go. All right, looks like we're in the clear. And he did make it out. Good. He's now returned to base and will be repairing. A lot of damage caused to that, uh, T uh, the IS-1. So we need to make sure we keep that intact. And the enemy is fleeing from over here. Let's go ahead and bring in what we really want, which is infantry now. Let's bring in a large group of infantry and some uh, ground troops. And we're going to try to recapture up here. Sometimes you need to give ground in order to uh, maintain your defense and just recapture it in a second uh, in a second wave. Also, we have some very good anti-aircraft units. The ZSU M15, an American-made unit. Of course, the Americans and uh, British and other um, nations did help support the Soviet Union and supply them during the Second World War with transport specifically but many other things too. Right, we're going to try to hit both of those positions now at the bridge and continue to resupply that vehicle. Looks like one of our mortars was unfortunately destroyed by an uh, enemy artillery strike. Enemy is uh, in way more control of flags than we are. I don't have the ability to recapture all these positions and to be honest, I've given the enemy some pre-made decks as well that uh, our team made, so they're performing very well. The, the enemy team, the AI, is attacking with decks that me and my team have made and have used in uh, actual uh, online battles as well against other players, so it's good to see them actually succeeding and breaking through though the enemy is, got, I mean, the AI just has a tremendous gap here. I don't even know where these defenses are at all. So that's kind of disappointing to see where the... Uh, I, I actually am uh, holding the deepest, aside from this group here, that they just can't find because they're in a forest. So I'm holding the line, damn it. I'm following my orders. Now let's see if our supply trucks can keep uh, pumping in this, the supplies. I'm still going to counterattack, and I'm going to try to take this high ground here. Luckily, Katusha's and Andarusha's and whatever else is firing there. There's a Katusha there. I'm going to try to push up and capture the villages up top and get the, get the high ground. 
But uh, if we don't attack, we will suffer a defeat in about three minutes. So a lot of players like to hold back and keep it casual and whatnot. And you know, we're not talking about a we're not talking about a Rolling Stone songs from from the '60s. Sometimes everybody, you got to keep attacking, 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 and quit worrying about uh, the losses because in two minutes and fifty seconds, the battle is over unless our allies get in gear and start attacking positions. I don't have enough of everything in order to do this. I'm going to try to send units, though, to, like, for example, the bridge and see if I can get something. Let's go ahead and attack this uh, Stug and then see if I can drop some uh, small cluster munitions on those moving troop transports. There we go. Munitions are out. There goes the cluster munitions. Excellent. One of those uh, anti-tank aircraft have caused a lot of damage. And we're now moving to the top of the hill. To the hill. Unfortunately, fighters are everywhere. I can only call out one uh, anti-aircraft gun at the moment. Oh, finally, AI call calling out some sort of help, but that was an in-stack one and done. Wow, with only a one star. That seems very unlikely. Usually it takes a little bit more meddling than that. Our AI counterparts need to counterattack. But that's what makes those uh, AI modes so tough when you're uh, attacking against the AI, or rather defending. The AI will find holes in all your defenses pretty much all the time. Excellent. SU-85 hitting uh, and almost destroying a uh, Panzer IV-H. Let's get him one more shot. And an explosion. Very good. All right, we're, we're sending our... Infantry over right away. All of our units. We need to go. There's a lot of enemy infantry out there. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of waiting. And I'm going to try to recapture this position. Tiger E moving around out there. Let's see if we can get another IL-2 going. And defend it with a Yak-9. So it seems as if our defense has been successful. A high concentration of infantry, backed with uh, heavy vehicles behind it, of course, stops the enemy from advancing and allows you to pick off all their vehicles. But it seems like the most important thing is to uh, worry about a counterattack and flanking. I'm now rushing on purpose to bypass all enemy defenses and attackers, and we're going to lose some tanks, unfortunately, because we have to make up for AI's incompetence just gigantic swaths of land that are just undefended whatsoever. It seems like the AI is capable of setting up defenses, but when it comes to actually defending, it's a no-can-do. Put our troops in that village there. See if we can get a tank to the line, and it seems like we were too little too late. So a minor defeat there, as our AI is a little incompetent, but uh, yeah, still good. Although I will say that uh, the AI did a good job of utilizing our decks and did push deep with the number of tanks that they were given. But look at that, the IS-1, with that defensive line there, destroying a hell of a lot of enemy units, including a lot of medium tanks and veteran ones at that as well. Uh, also, the 45mm bunker, proven to be in a good place, destroying a lot of enemy troop transports, them trying to get to our flank. The uh, enemy also trying to attack with tanks. We destroyed a lot of those. The artillery doing a little good work. In fact, one of them killing a Tiger E. No way. Good kill on that one. Uh, a Stug and a Nashorn, and also some troop transporters killed by yet another AT gun in a bunker position. And an IL-237 killing uh, a Stug-3 and, then of course, the Tiger E that we saw as well. And even a Sapper group uh, getting a kill on a Pac-40, somehow flanking around there and getting them. All right, very good. Well, this was an experiment to see exactly uh, how you know the, the defense would go. I guess we have to, if you're defending, we're going to have to put the AI on a harder difficulty. I just put everything on medium, but I guess we'll need our allies on like uh, a harder difficulty, so that way they're a little bit more uh, capable and competent. Tiger here, uh, as you can see, a very good formidable foe, killing three KV-1s. They're having a great day. Artillery also destroying some of our cheaper troop, uh, tr our anti-aircraft trucks, so not not the worst thing in the world. And then uh, a few uh, units being killed by uh, shoots in as well that we're able to get in the woods. So not not too bad of a uh, of a day really for me. Uh, I think if we take a look at our stats, we can see that uh, I had the most kills out of everybody except for the AI medium. Wow. Okay, they had some great stuff, but at least my losses were very low. So that defensive line proved to be quite good. We conserved a majority of our troops, but what our biggest problem was is our mobility. 
However, I can't be responsible for every place on the map. So what we can then devise from this is that areas that I defended in are probably very good to put a fewer number of troops and then expand the defenses. However, your defenses are only good as the defenses around you where the enemy was clearly able to leak through. So no defenses, quite obvious. They can roll right through. And a lot of defenses, though costly, can really make the enemy delayed and make them pay. I'm looking forward to running more experiments in Steel Division 2. So if you have any other suggestions for defenses or for attacks or any other weapons or techniques or tactics you'd like to see, let me know down below in the comment section. I'd be happy to test them out. I think this was a really cool one, and uh, I think we're going to do more of this in the future. It would be interesting to see how it all played out. And I think I really had the enemy, though they flanked around me, up against the ropes. Really, they weren't able to either spawn too much aside from trying to get around me. And even there, we pushed them back sometimes. All right, everyone, thanks again for clicking the tab of that like button. Thanks for subscribing, all you guys who do. You guys are wonderful. So thanks, as always, for your support. And I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.